Hey, it's the Antenna Man, back again with another idea for a fully adjustable hairpin VHF UHF tuner. I made this in, well, I you know, it took me a couple of months. It might only take you know, like a weekend to build, but, well, it's a hairpin, and our impedance here, our design impedance is 450 ohm. And I determined that with SimSmith. So it's basically just a 450 ohm open wire section here. And you can see what I did was I have it suspended above this piece of wood. And I got the idea kind of from guitar strings and cello bridges. And the wires are pulled tight by a couple of eye bolts. And then I have another bolt here in between to keep the spacing where I want it to be to get, you know, close to the ideal. The, the spacing is actually, I calculated it out. This is 14 gauge wire, by the way. I calculated it out to be 2.668, yeah, 2.68 millimeters, uh, no, centimeters spacing and that should give about 450 ohm the exact number isn't really important so then all I do is just hook up my antenna wire right here and just pretend that goes to an antenna and the tension I can adjust with a ratchet here with a deep well socket so it's just a bulkhead connector and all it does is just sit in there like that and that's actually good enough to get the tuning down and then once you have a tune down all you gotta do is just oh let me show you the shorting bar too I made this shorting bar from a clothespin and some aluminum can and then I stuck some copper tape in there as the conductor because it works a lot better than the aluminum and then you can just take it and clip it on the two wires and move it back and forth like that as a shorting bar. It works. I'm surprised how well it worked. I had it on the VNA and I could tune it and so you get your ruler out and you just measure your distances like how far and you can move this. There's no plastic in the way. There's nothing in the way. No insulation. So it's not like open wire line where you have plastic that you, where you know, can't strip it all down and then it's all floppy and stuff. This holds everything tight. And then you got the um, other extreme, which is like a J-pole antenna where the matching network is a pipe and you can't do anything because everything is just fixed in position. So, plus your, your impedance is by default very low because your your conductor is a pipe and it's pretty you know good diameter so they're so close together that the impedance is something like I don't know 100 ohms or something so this this way with the 14 gauge wire and I you know 14 gauge turns out to be about the right size you can just stretch it between the two points and you can see I have it like I notched the wood out here and it's just kind of like it's looped underneath you can't really see it, but it's all one piece of wire. It just goes down back here and loops around and comes back. So there's nothing preventing you from attaching a point anywhere along the length of this wire. And that way you can dial in your tune. And then you don't even need a VNA. You can just use your radio. And you can tune for the, the lowest SWR. And... When you find it, like you, you don't even need uh, just the, the SWR meter in your radio is all you need. And you just use this for temporarily, but you're not going to get a whole lot of power through this little point contact here. It isn't going to like it. But if you want to design an actual matching network, then all you need to do is just take your ruler here and measure it. And then you enter the measurement into... Um, into SimSmith 
and then you know exactly what your impedance was and exactly what components you need or how you know how big to build your final hairpin match if you're building a hairpin it's perfect so at least that's the idea anyway so this will do two meter band it'll probably do 70 centimeter band pretty well they're close enough together yet that it shouldn't radiate that much uh, but as you go higher in frequency of course is you know there's always a chance the wires might radiate so if you go lower I mean this could even go it could even go down as far as like four meter band if you have that in your country in your area as an option but see as it goes lower then the length of this becomes an issue because it might not be long enough for you see but at two meter this is about ideal and you can match a pretty wide range of different antenna impedances with this uh, I was matching a an end fed wire with this and that's got a pretty high impedance so it works really well I was surprised and I only need I didn't even need that much I only needed maybe like about that much and it was already in tune and then the the cable from the, the VNA was right about like here or something I forget exactly where it was but if, if this isn't pulling like it is right here it'll just stay Let's see if I can get it to do it see how it pull it pulls from the side so this isn't pulling it there it goes see it just stays in there and believe it or not that's that's enough but see I wouldn't I wouldn't try to put any kind of power through that because you know if this slips there goes your finals but you know it seems to work and maybe you won't build this exact thing but uh, I thought it was pretty good and it, and it does work I had another idea actually for this and it didn't use like a straight piece of wood like this you can see what I did I kind of like took well if you can see it I have to I'm gonna have to move it here I hope nothing breaks okay you can see what I did to strengthen this stuff because this is like this woodite deck board stuff I put a couple of um, I don't know exactly what these are but they came from a pallet they're really crappy wood you don't need great wood for it and I just screwed them in to the I mean I screwed the deck board into them for strength because otherwise you know it would have a tendency to flex because the wire is pulling it constantly and I put in screws I didn't want to put in screws because they're metal but I put in screws anyway because there was nothing else I had no other option this stuff won't hold glue so I just put in as few as I could as short as I could short as I thought I could get away with you have to attach the wire here because this is where the copper ends but see there's a connection here to the um, to the eye bolt so the eye bolt is part of the circuit and there's a capacitance here and these two eye bolts are not connected you see the, there's I put in two angle brackets here they're not connected they're insulated so this is actually a capacitative stub right here so I I simulated that and I found out that it doesn't even matter you can actually tune it out so all you have to do is just attach here where there's copper that's where you want to that's where you want to attach because obviously you know everybody knows you want the copper not the you know less conductive steel or you know this is zinc plated steel oh yeah and then this is right I didn't show this either this is a um, nylon screw and it just keeps these two pieces I mean these two eye bolts held together for the right spacing these aren't oh yeah these bridges here these little br these are called bridges you know from cellos and stuff and guitars this is a bridge this is another bridge here 
these are not even screwed in and they don't need to be because the force of the wire pressing down on it holds it in place so they're just sitting there they're not connected this too you can actually just take all this down so I you know this video ended up being way longer than I was hoping for but sometimes it kinda has to be long because there's a lot to say and there's a lot to explain here you know this is something I've never seen anybody do before maybe it's a world first I don't know punch my like button in for me huh okay got it okay bye